Hey everyone, Andrew here. Just wanted to let you know that this week's episode is going to be a little different than what you're used to hearing. Uh, first of all, our buddy Todd got married, uh, which is very exciting. So we decided to give him the week off for his honeymoon and all that fun stuff. So instead of a real episode, uh, we're going to play for you a little thing that we recorded for our friends at Left Trigger, Right Trigger. You might remember uh, Giovanni was on our show here a couple months back. Um, so this is this is going to be interesting. Uh, it is for a show called Full Metal Bazinga. Now, Full Metal Bazinga was an experiment done by those same guys, the Left Trigger, Right Trigger guys. And it is just the weirdest and just a most amazing show that I've heard in a long time. Uh, basically, it was what started out as a watch along for the final season of the Big Bang Theory. But after a couple episodes, they realized that there's nothing to talk about because it's the Big Bang Theory. Uh, so they kind of devolved into this completely improvised science fiction audio drama. Um, basically, their one rule was whatever anyone says has to be canon. So it went from let's talk about the Big Bang Theory to the creator of Big Bang Theory is a giant horrifying spider demigod. Uh, it's really good and it's really weird and I love it. So for the final episode, uh, we were lucky enough to be involved. Um, we recorded among a lot of other podcast friends. We recorded a little bit. So we recorded this whole 25 minute episode that was basically what would our show debate this be? if it were in a parallel universe and our show was about the Big Bang Theory. So we did an episode arguing the Big Bang Theory instead of arguing video games and comics. And it was super fun and uh, we hope you enjoy it. Um, if you like this, definitely, definitely go check out Full Metal Bazinga. Uh, you can find them www.fullmetalbazinga.libson.com or you can check them out on Twitter at FM Bazinga. Uh, they just wrapped the series along with the Big Bang Theory, so you can listen to the whole thing front to back. Well, that's enough for me. Enjoy this experimental episode where we all pretend that we're huge fans of the Big Bang Theory. Open your mouth, prepare your tongue, because you're about to get a taste. I cannot believe we've gone 12 episodes without me being able to talk about Final Fantasy. Well, I know the doll is bad. So I gotta think the dusty balloon is less bad. I mean, if all life everywhere ends, what have I that's lost? <laughs> facial hair as a theme is not something I ever would have chosen. So yeah, that's the one that Rock is just sweaty the whole time. Yeah. He's got that good, good pointy Jafar beard. <laughs> I've got three pages of AMA citations. This is the Debate This Podcast. Hello, and welcome to The Antagonist Altercation, the show where no one is inherently correct, but everyone shares their flawed perspectives anyway. In this show, we take time out of our busy adult lives to talk about the Big Bang Theory and whether or not young Sheldon will fit the Sheldon-sized hole in our hearts when it's gone. That's right, Bazinga Nation, as the Big Bang Theory finale finally draws near, we all have just a few more days to speculate how Laurie and his team will see these characters off after 12 long years. And as we've seen year after year, despite his best friend's attempts, Sheldon remains the same inflexible stick in the mud that he's always been. So while it definitely won't happen this way, obviously, it's, it's fun to think of the ways that Sheldon could go uh, the way of Walter White and bite the bullet at the end of the finale. So I've asked my fellow Bazinga bros to join me and play out this fictional headcanon. Uh, with me today are Kyle Wallowitz Harper. Matt Kripke Cole and David Will Wheaton Flam. Gentlemen, tell me how you think Sheldon will meet his untimely demise. Well, Andrew, first I'd like to thank you for naming me after the great Howard Wallowitz. Um, oh, you're very easily welcome, the best friend. character in the show. Um, so I think uh, we're we're gonna get the ending that it, that if you've been paying attention to the show, um, that Chuck Lorre. Big Bang Theory, and if you if you read into the subtext, Young Sheldon have been building to for the last twelve seasons. Um, and, Interesting, and that is Leonard is finally going to get sh fed up with Sheldon, lock him in the the Large Hadron Collider at their work, and in an attempt <laughs> to kill him, turn it on. 
Um, oh, interesting. Ha- however, interesting. as any fan of the series will tell you, Sheldon Cooper cannot be killed by science, and activating the Hadron Collider will actually just spread his consciousness across time and space, <laughs> triggering a new Big Bang, starting oh, wow. a new universe. This one created in Sheldon's image, um, giving a and and bringing bringing full meaning to the title, the Big Bang Theory. Whoa, <laughs> that's perfect. I like Tied that. it all back in. It all it, it comes full circle. Uh, the the bare naked lady song will start back up again right at the end, and and um, CBS will follow the finale with the first episode of Big Bang Theory. Um, oh, I like that. Oh, I love bring that. It, a lot. Bring it all full circle. It's it's a sequel and a prequel all at once. Yep. <laughs> Let me tell you, if there is one thing this universe needs, it is more Big Bang Theory. I can just not get enough of it. That's very true. Um, it's kind of like the end of Battlestar Galactica, which is the end is the beginning. Yes. I love this. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> that, that, right. That's my, that's my thought. That's, that's Man. how it's going to end. Like if, if you've been paying attention and, and we, we certainly have here on the antagonist altercation. Um, that's the only way I can think of that it will end. So, so let's play in this headspace for a minute. So Kyle, walk me through what a, a, sh- a universe in Sheldon's mind is like, that's gotta be like a nightmare. Um, it's, so everything's going to be very, very meticulously organized. They're going to be very, uh, very hard and fast rules that everyone follows. Um, and, and lots of, lots of comic book references just built into the universe. Um, from the beginning, this to the whole universe is just going to be Easter eggs for everybody to find. That's fair. You know, I I never actually thought about this, but you're absolutely right. It's going to be very organized in there. And this could actually be like, this is world peace. Oh, absolutely. (laughs) Absolutely. (laughs) Wait. (laughs) Dave, Dave, wait a minute. (laughs) This is how we finally get there. are Are you implying that the only way to save the world is to destroy it? Is that is that where is that where you're going here? Well, I think that's a bit I think that's a bit cliche, but yeah. Yeah, sure. I mean, at least in this in this theory, in right? this big bang theory. In this big bang mm. theory. But we are starting right. a new universe while the universe is in a very hot dense state. <laughs> <laughs> so the only way the only means to salvation is is a complete autocracy. Got it. <laughs> yes. I, I guess so. Uh, all right. Well, Dave, uh, in that note, why don't you tell us your big, big theory on how Sheldon meets his untimely demise? Um, well, interestingly, I, I think it is actually very similar. I think it is going to be something that involves space. I, I sort of figured, though, it was going to be something more like a, a meteorite colliding with the Earth and okay. sort of, uh, you know, because of all the stuff that we've been seeing, right, where they're using the telescope to look up into the sky and there's, they're talking about alien. Roger was talking about aliens at one point. Right. And just the idea that there's something else out there. And I think that something out there is what's going to finally bring the disrupt the, uh, the destruction. But you think it's not, you think it's not actually aliens like they've been hinting at, but just it, a meteor. It could, it could, I mean, who knows? The, maybe the aliens uh, direct the meteor at us. Okay. Right. Okay. Like, all I know is that it's probably the meteor is probably going to hit the Earth and it's going to destroy most things, including Sheldon, and it will spread <laughs> his ashes across yep. the universe. And it's kind of, it kind of just ties into what you were saying, though. I think that that could bring about a whole new start. Yeah. Hmm. So another another great purge, if you will. Perhaps yes. This one not brought about necessarily by humanity upon itself. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But who knows? Now, how, in your mind, how does this connect to the ending of the 90s sitcom Dinosaurs, where a meteorite also fell and destroyed civilization as we know it? Mm, I think, well, I think if we look at the facts, dinosaurs is what comes after the Big Bang Theory. Mm, Mm -hmm. Interesting take. Yeah. And it's, you know, you're sort of, it's one of those, you're doomed into a perpetual cycle. Um, over and over again right so mm-hmm. so that happens in the big bang theory and then we get dinosaurs maybe there's something in between who knows yeah 
Um, and then we get dinosaurs and then the meteor hits again and it reboots uh, the system. Maybe that's when we get young Sheldon. Yeah, I was going to say, I think we have the answer in the inner, the intercool there is the young Sheldon. Mm. Mm. I think you might, I think you might be onto something. I think we, we might've cracked the code, gotten, gotten deep into Chuck Lorre's headspace there. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Which is very hard to do. He is, he is quite a genius. He's a genius yeah. and an enigma. It's, but we might've done it. I think we got it here. I'm impressed. It only took us, what, how many episodes has it been since we started this podcast? Uh, 73. That's crazy. I've got, we finally cracked it, though. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, it's been especially weird because we've only recorded three episodes a year for 12 years. So good job, guys. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we've had a lot of time to think in between those episodes. So that's, the, that's the, real, the real hero here. All right. So we've got multiple Sheldon verses. We've got the great purge i.e. meteor uh matt what's your thoughts how will sheldon meet his demise in your opinion well so if you connect all the dots in this wonderful show of the big bang theory you'll soon come to find out that sheldon's intelligence and and prowess in all things is not of human nature in fact it's Mm. it's not even really of this world much like robert johnson Sheldon also sold his soul to the devil at the crossroads. <laughs> God damn it. Oh. <laughs> God damn it. Now, I could go on all day citing sources, oh. connecting numbers, putting things together yes, to explain yes, to yes. you how we, I know. We know you could. But, <laughs> Please but don't. I, I don't think I need to. to. I don't I want think you to cite to. one source. I want you to cite one source right now. Sure. So one source right now. If you look at the clock on Sheldon's bedroom wall in episode three of the last season of Big Bang Theory you will see that there is an extra number on that clock. You know what that extra number is? That extra number is a three. That means there are two threes on Sheldon's clock in episode three of Big Bang Theory. Two threes is one six, and it's episode three. There are three sixes, six, six, six. Sheldon is the devil. Moving on. (laughs) Moving on. Let me tell you that once you sell your soul to the devil... You don't get to go back on that. And eventually, it all comes to a close, and your life must end. Now, Sheldon's time is coming. Sheldon is reaching the final age, and that black spot on his hand is growing bigger. You haven't seen it because they use a lot of makeup in the show, but it's, it's growing. Right, of course. And his time is about to come to a close. <laughs> I don't know that Sheldon dies. I think Sheldon is just consumed by the hellscape void that he has been running from for years ever since he sold himself to the devil. Now, what's interesting, much like the Ghost Rider, I believe that there can only be one Sheldon at a time. No! And young Sheldon, young Sheldon is the next Sheldon. So I do believe that the season premiere of young Sheldon, after the end of Big Bang Theory, we will see young Sheldon approach the crossroads, sell his soul to the devil, and gain the prowess to move on for the next 24 or so years before he too is consumed by the hellscape void and we start this cycle once again. How did we let Matt make this a a Ghost Rider podcast again? I don't know how he does it. It's like he gets money every time he says Ghost Rider. I wish that I did. I hate it. You know if you are, Matt, you have to to share it with us. I know, I'd tell you if it was true. Mm. But that's it. I hate everything that you are and everything that you've become. <laughs> Sheldon is Sheldon sold his soul to the devil. His time is coming. He will be consumed by the hellscape void. The end. I, I can't I can't decide which of these endings is the nicer ending for Sheldon. I, like, oh, clearly the one where he becomes one with the universe, creating one in his own image. I think Sheldon as God is the nicest one. But Sheldon as a demon, as a mischievous demon, is... Actually, narratively, probably the most satisfying. <laughs> <laughs> you're not you're not incorrect. What if what if okay, so let's turn this on its head, right? What if Matt's theory is correct, but Sheldon has already sold himself to sold himself to the devil years ago, and he only exists to torment the rest of those who are left, i.e. Leonard and Penny and the rest of them. So he is their he is, actual tormentor. He is their punishment. Oh. He is their punishment. Maybe they've all died years ago and they just live in this, you know, kind of waiting room purgatory that is covered in Chinese food. Perhaps what Chuck Lorre knows that the rest of us don't 
is that everyone on the Big Bang Theory has already sold their soul to the devil. Sheldon is the devil. These people are stuck in a perpetual loop as Sheldon collects the debt that they owe him that they didn't realize Sheldon was the devil. Hmm. I like this. This is there good. Are so many si- there are so many signs. Like, you are <laughs> opening my eyes to this. I, 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 I can't believe it. This has been so obvious. Uh, yeah, we have a lot to think about. I, I, on the other hand, took this in a little different fashion. And yeah, what's your take? I, I thought about it a little more realistically, and I think what's going to happen is we see Leonard come back and realize, and, and he's really happy, and he announces to the rest of the group, guys, guys, I just won the lottery. And then we flash in all these different scenes of Leonard buying expensive things, paying off debts, buying a new house for he and Penny. They then have kids and grow old and, you know, live, kind of live out their life. And then we see in the last scene, Leonard wakes up and we realize it was all a dream. And actually, Sheldon had died from a heart attack three days ago. Oh, end oh. of the series. It- you think it, it? You think it's the Roseanne ending? I think it's the Roseanne ending. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh boy. Classic sitcom ending. Cla- classic sitcom ending. As classic as turning off the lights. Yes. I think it's a it's a definite possibility. But what a what a slap in the face to the fans if if that's what they do. Um, I think we're all tired of the it was all a dream, everything was in Leonard's head ending. It's been done before, and I think Chuck Lorre is better than that. That's true. I mean, they even they pulled something similar to that in season four. I remember it, they yeah, did. Like, they absolutely did. It would be very lazy of them to try to pull something like that again. But I guess we wouldn't be expecting it. It was really crazy when that flying tentacle monster came and, and I thought was going to pull off Raj's head. But um, it was a weird turn that they didn't make that a real that, that they didn't make that reality. I think they just didn't have the budget for it. Yeah, that's a good point. Honestly, a recurring tentacle monster would have really um eaten up their cgi budget and we all know they need that cgi budget to make sure that uh howard howard's character has hair uh who (laughs) is famously famously a bald actor who won't wear a wig but um the character has hair so they need to put it on they need to use cgi to put it on there's the the hottest take of them all all right guys any any final thoughts on uh sheldon's ultimate demise uh my only one is is that um, I I trust Chuck Lorre and his genius. Uh, I think he's going to close the show off in a very meaningful way. And even if it isn't my um, all all consuming Sheldon universe, then um, it will be equally as satisfying. Um, all all glory be to Chuck Lorre. All glory to Lorre. All glory to Lorre. All glory to Lorre. Glory to Lorre. Dave, final thoughts? Uh, no, you know I'm just really excited to see how the finale plays out. It's been a long time coming. Same. Indeed. Very, very excited. Matt, anything else you want to add? No, no, I don't. I don't have anything else I want to add. All my thoughts have been put on the table. There it is. Well, thanks, everyone, for listening into the Antagonist Altercation. Uh, Tag along with our discussion all on social media at BBT Altercast. And check out our website at altercast.com. If you like what you hear, please, please leave us a review so more people can hear our incredibly insightful opinions. Until next time. I'm Andrew Henderson. I'm Matt. Two threes are six, three sixes are six, 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 and six, six, six is just 12 threes, Cole. I'm Kyle um, Howard Wallerwitz's CGI hair budget Harper. And I'm David. Chuck Lorre is the genius we've always deserved. And we're saying you have our gratitude for participating in the aforementioned altercation. And if you disagree, you can get up from that spot on the couch. All glory to Lori. All glory to Lori. Are you tired of the domestic discussions of the more pedestrian podcasts? Looking for a more enlightened way to talk about video games? Then look no further than Left Trigger, Right Trigger, the video game book club where four hosts discuss the more sophisticated issues in games. Topics include... Body parts. Zelda. 
the division. Hyper light Tokyo Drifter. Good vibes. Time machine. Doing the cab uh, biscuit faces. Being terrible. Muzapan sex dance. The faces are terrible. When the mouse is away, or when the cat's a mouse. I can't tell white people apart. My body is going to dissolve. I'm playing wine. The Gashapon is just a womb. Man, this game's got hot orcs. <laughs> Left trigger, right trigger, your video game book club. Wow, that was what? really disappointing.